So one thing that then is missing is a dynamic simulation for the process in I.O. And that's where MIMIC comes into play. Uh, MIMIC is a dynamic process in I.O. simulation package for software acceptance testing and operator training. And uh, MIMIC essentially comes in and either through the I.O. subsystem of the uh, Delta B controller or directly as the modules are assigned to the workstations, reads and writes to I.O. values. It allows you to have a dynamic uh, I.O. simulation and then build uh, process models to the level of complexity required for the application. MIMIC is, uh, we just redesigned MIMIC and re released it this year. It is licensed in sizes and uh, by the number of simulated I.O. tags. Simulated I.O. tags roughly correlate to DSPs. Um, you can go from 1,000 to 30,000 simulated I.O. tags. There are drivers for Delta B Simulate, Delta B Simulate SIS, and Delta B I.O. bus. The Delta B I.O. bus, as we'll show you in a second, requires a hardware interface as well. It's actually a controller simulation. We have what we call an operator training manager that allows you to build structured training scenarios. It has integrated uh, scoring and reporting. It's an add-on to the MIMI application. And finally, we have what we call a MIMI server application, too. Uh, this is an option that's going to be released this month that allows you to have multiple users to be working on your simulation, which is very handy for uh, testing type applications. So the two components here, we've got the offline control system, simply with Delta V Simulate. we got the process and IL models and dynamic uh, simulation with MIMIC. And we tie all these together with some really simple and easy to set up architectures. For software acceptance testing, what we generally find is the best route to test your control system and minimize the risk of uh, going from the application software to the, uh, to the uh, online environment is to use real controllers and use a module we call the virtual I.O. module. Now, if you see in the drawing there, you've got uh, your Delta V workstations your Delta V area control network, and then these controllers, these uh, MD controllers. And right next to them, instead of having I.O. associated with them, they have what they call the virtual I.O. module. The virtual I.O. module emulates the I.O. cards of the uh, Delta V controller of the 64 I.O. cards. All the I.O. cards that are currently available for Delta V are fully emulated, uh, <coughs> simulated by this card. And then over a standard Ethernet network, they talk back to the MIMIC machine. Uh, this gives us complete non-intrusive I.O. simulation of your, of your complete I.O. subsystem and then the process models uh, are automatically, um, the, the process models reside in MIMIC and give you everything from simple tiebacks and I.O. models to very complex models depending on what you want to do with them. This is a great application for testing because you actually minimize the risk of the application software and the risk of the system and how it's going to respond in the hardware of the plant. Because you get a really good indication not only of how your application software runs, how your interlocks are going, how your sequences work, how your interactions of loop tracking and other things work as well, but you also get an idea of controller loading usually within about 10% of the actual number in the plant. You get uh, a, a um, really a rock-on number for uh, uh, for memory usage and instruction slip. And if you've ever gone into startup and realized at the last moment that you've got a controller that is overloaded and you need to split it up, you realize how much you wish you would have caught that back in the test environment in the lab. And this gives you the ability to test out all of that, catch the issues, you know, to fine-tune any controller loading issues well beforehand. It eliminates, you know, the risk of the application software. In addition, if you're a validated plan, this approach meets the Gantt 4 guidelines. And there's a whole bunch of things, and there's a white paper on our website that goes through the Gantt 4 guidelines and how simulation can be used with them. But I'm going to summarize it in two. There are two different features that we address with uh, this type of simulation. The GAN4 guidelines clearly state that uh, your code needs to be frozen before you go into software acceptance testing, and you have to remove any dead code within there as well. So with this type of approach, you essentially have the ability to freeze the code, freeze the application software, test thoroughly, you're not introducing any dead code for testing, and then you can go into the operating <coughs> environment with no modifications to your application. 
So this is a great solution for solve our sentence testing. The downside of it, if there is one, is that it um, you got to have hard work. So you probably need to make at least a little makeshift panel to put all this stuff together. Um, the other downside of it for operator training is when the molecules run into works or the controllers, they don't have the ability to do the free snapshot and restore and speed up slowdown functionality that you can do in a Delta V simulate workstation. So while we love this for testing, for training, we might you can use it for training as well, but for training you might even have a better solution. And that would be where you would take the modules unassign from the controllers, if you need to run to simulate convert utility, remember that's one way. So don't do this and then expect to move it right back into a uh, field bus simulation, you know, or field bus system, you're not going to be able to do that. But you, then you would put them in the assigned modules folder of the workstation, and now everything's running in a nice little PC soft environment, and then then it comes in, same, same kind of setup as before, you get your Delta V workstations, you've got, but now instead of real controllers, you've got Delta V workstations that are acting as the function of the real controllers, running the control modules, and then underneath it, you get your simulation network that is connected back to the MIMIC. And then with our MIMIC driver for Delta V simulate, we essentially write to the simulate parameter of the input blocks, and we read the output parameter of the output blocks. Um, this gives us a great capability to have a completely soft environment, uh, free snapshot restore functionality, uh, a process snapshot is available and completely supported with MIMIC and Delta V Simulate. And speed up slow down is also something that actually we're going to be introducing and releasing later this year, uh, probably early next year. Later this year, we're almost done with this year, so it'll be early next year. Um, this also gives us ability to condense and everything now instead of having like if you've got four controllers you need to have in your simulation environment, you can put all of them with Simulate Pro into one of those workstations. So it's a really nice setup. Now, I talked to you before um, about the goals of your training. You need to think in terms of whether you're going to do team training or individual training. This would be the configuration for a team training environment. You could set this up so you could have a, a, a simulated or virtual <laughs> controller that would just look just like your regular controller from a functionality standpoint. You can have the same type of Delta V simulate station, professional, uh, Pro Plus, operator stations, everything implemented the same. And if you wanted to test your operators in a team environment, you could easily do that. But this same architecture <coughs> also allows us to do individual by training systems. Now, in individual training systems now, we have what we call concurrent type simulation where you have one mimic I.O. and process simulator that is now directed to mirrors of the same simulation or it could be or the, the same Delta V configuration or they could be even different Delta V configurations. But the the operator who's working on the first workstation can do whatever he wants and it doesn't impact the other operators. So this works out very well say if you have um, you know, four to six, you want, you want to set up a training system for four to six operators and cycle them through those and give them individual evaluations and testing. And in fact, I, I more and more I see this being used more and more in operator training systems because the other, the biggest limitation of this <laughs> is with Simulate Pro, you can only put four to six controllers worth of modules in the workstation. But four to six controllers worth of modules is really almost a complete span of control that one operator can work with. You know, if you're talking a thousand to two thousand loops, that's you know, in most cases, that's pretty much where you're at. 